Hello, um, my name is Natalie Seddon. I am Professor of Biodiversity in the Department of Zoology at the University of Oxford. I'm also a Senior Fellow in Biology at Wadham College. So in this presentation, I'm going to talk about um, why you might want to do uh, study biology at Oxford, what the learning experience um, is like, and also what the admissions process involves. Um, so let's, let's start. So if you're to come to Oxford to study biology, you'll be taught by world leading scientists. You will be part of a very supportive uh, collegiate system, which involves tutorials and pastoral care. Um, you will have access to many local resources for teaching. Um, teaching encompasses a wide range of pure and applied subjects from genetics and molecular mechanisms to disease, behaviour, tropical ecology, biodiversity, conservation and climate change and other major issues such as those. There are opportunities for local and international lab and field work and a degree in biology at Oxford is a springboard to a very diverse range of careers in civil society, research, government and business. So let me talk about all these issues in a little bit more detail. So what does the tutorial system involve? Well, tutorials, of which there are normally around one or two a week, tend to involve between two and three students um, and an experienced tutor who may well be one of the lecturers or a member of their research group. These, the purpose of these tutorials are to challenge each student to think critically and communicate clearly. We really place a lot of emphasis on those skills which develop over the, uh, the four years, three to four years of the, pro of the um, degree. And the tutorials are an opportunity to um, clarify issues in a way that's not possible in larger groups. In terms of local teaching and research resources, we have White and Woods, which is a large um, uh, woodland on the outskirts of Oxford, which is, um, provides lots of opportunities for doing project works on different groups of plants and animals in a beautiful setting. These woods have been continuously studied for over 60 years now. We have the Natural History Museum, a very beautiful learning space with lots and lots of specimens and uh, work is encouraged there to, to do as part of project work over the three to four years. Um, we have the field Druse herbarium. There are over a million plant specimens here, and this is a very interesting place. It's uh, the fourth oldest herbarium in the world and the oldest herbarium in the UK. And we also have the Oxford Botanic Gardens and Harcourt Arboretum. So lots of places in which to learn outside um, lecture theatres and classes. The biology degree um, is structured as follows. So everyone applies for um, the four year um, M biology degree. However, you could choose to opt out after three years and graduate with a BA if you so wish. And progression to a fourth year is contingent on satisfactory academic progress during the three years. There are around eight hours of lectures per week. Um, there are also seven or so hours per week of research skills training. There are one hour per week of class discussion and feedback. And as I've said already, there are also tutorials um, involved, around two to three hours of these per week. Although this varies a little bit by module and across the three to four years of the course. So the first year um, of the course involves a lot of orientation. So um, we help you to understand how the Oxford system works and how it's different from school because we appreciate it's a very big change from um, most schooling environments. We, under, we place a lot of emphasis on understanding how people do science and we recognise that it's, to be a scientist is not enough just to learn facts about living systems but also how science um, is organised and how hypotheses are formed and tested and so forth. And we also place in those first four weeks a lot of emphasis on learning about what the scientific method is. So in week one, you will learn about the tree of life, you know, how, we, how we have come from Darwin's original doodles about the evolutionary relationships of species to, the modern, to modern phylogenetics. In week two, we talk about how we understand the world that we can't see. And so we take a peek into cells and genes and their ever advancing technology. In week three, we talk about discuss evolution. Um, Theodore Dobzhansky famously said that nothing in biology makes sense except in the light of evolution. And we'll talk about what this really means and whether we can see this process in action. 
And at the end of week four, um, or during week four rather, you'll be asked to undertake a mini project to put your new skills and understanding about the scientific method into action and try to answer a specific scientific question, of course, with the help of an expert. There are three major themes in the first year. Um, these are three compulsory strands woven into a coherent narrative that involves a combination of lectures, research skills, training and tutorials. The three themes are the diversity of life, building a phenotype from genes and cells to individuals, and evolution and ecology. The diversity of life involves an exploration of all life from the first cells to bacteria, plants, fungi, animals and more. And we also explore what the key evolutionary transitions are and Earth's history. When it comes to the second theme, building a phenotype, we will be looking at genomes, genes and the structure and function of cells. We will also be looking at developmental biology, trying to understand better how cells build bodies. In the evolutionary and ecology um, theme, the third theme of the first year, we will learn about how evolution works, how organisms interact with their environment. And there is a field course in Pembrokeshire, Wales. In year two, so we begin to specialise, we choose three out of four themes, genomes and molecular biology, cell and developmental biology, behaviour and physiology of organisms, and ecology and evolution. There is also, also some compulsory skills training. So we have 16 lectures on statistics and experimental design. Each of these lectures is accompanied by a one hour computer class where the principles taught in the lecture are illustrated with hands-on examples. The two week skills courses take place in Trinity Term. And these take place immediately after your second year examinations. The format will be a two week course oriented towards hypothesis testing, and these are intended to be challenging and open ended. They are partly designed to prepare students to take on fourth year projects. Students will work in small groups with each group collecting its own data and a variety of lab and field courses will be offered. Now, three of these courses are residential field courses entirely apart or partially away from Oxford. Borneo, which is fully residential, which is a study of tropical ecosystems. Tenerife, which is one week residential and one week in Oxford, looking at plants. And Skoma, which is one week residential and one week in White and Woods, with a focus on birds. In year C, theme, we see um, a range of specialist themes. So teaching of the third year curriculum starts in the fifth week of Trinity term, which is the third term of the academic year, in the second year and continues until the end of Trinity term sorry, continues until the end of Hillary term. The second year themes continue into the third year and second year knowledge will be assumed by those teaching in the third year. The provisional third year modules um, are shown below. So we have advanced cell biology, genome diversity and evolution, animal behavior and physiology, ecosystems, conservations and sustainability, grand challenges, green grand challenges rather, advanced ecology and evolution, disease prediction and dynamics and evolution and development. In the optional fourth year, um, where there will be basically uh, several advanced skills courses, an opportunity to do a very serious piece of research in the form of an extended project. Um, lab or fieldwork will be possible um, nationally or internationally, and um, teaching will take place over two full terms. So the teaching that takes place during the biology degree course is very much grounded in the research, the active research that is taking place across the plant sciences and zoology departments. So I want to talk a little bit about the main themes of these research uh, programs in the two departments. So the three core themes of research in the plant sciences departments are as follows, biochemistry and systems biology, which investigates the cellular metabolic and physiological basis of growth in plants and microbes. Ecology, evolution is systematic, which is focused on the origin, maintenance and decline of plant diversity from sequences in their genomes to populations, species and their interactions. And the third key theme within plant sciences um, is cell and developmental biology, which aims to understand how processes underlying plant cell function and development are regulated. Comparative analyses further investigate how these regulatory pathways are changed during the course of evolution. In zoology, 
we have four broad overlapping research themes, ecology and conservation in a changing world, animal behavior, evolution and development, um, and infectious diseases. So this research involves a lot of field studies, lab experiments, and theoretical modeling. Um, study organisms range from birds and mammals through insects and plants to bacteria and viruses. And the work that is conducted within the zoology department addresses both key fundamental questions and also highly applied topics. Um, and there is a growing amount of research that is relevant to addressing major 21st century challenges such as climate change, biodiversity conservation, health and welfare and sustainable development. Now I mentioned at the beginning that a degree in biology at Oxford acts as a uh, springboard to a wide diversity of career pathways and here we have um, just an example of some of the um, careers that are pursued by people with biology degree courses. This is a growing list and the areas highlighted in bold are particularly um, uh, popular options after biology. So biologists go on to join the civil service, to work in conservation, to work as um, consultants in the field of ecology. Um, many also go on to work for non-governmental organisations, so conservation, health, aid and development organisations. Many also go on to work in the area of science communication. However, we also have people with biology degrees from Oxford going on to become filmmakers, farmers, to work in horticulture, journalism, uh, medicine, pharmaceuticals, law, uh, and the list goes on. So let's now talk about the admissions process. First of all, you have to decide which college you want to apply to. First of all, you have to work out which of the colleges in Oxford do offer, do offer biology as an option because it's important to know that not all of them do. And this is a list of the ones that do. In terms of choosing college, um, Really, this doesn't matter a great deal. The education that is offered is fundamentally similar. You know, lectures, practicals and all the public exams that you um, have as part of the degree course are university wide. So they're taught in the departments rather than at the colleges themselves. Um, things to consider, though, um, when you come for an open day or when you're researching colleges online, as I say, you have to first of all figure out that biology is offered. It's then also useful to look at what the biology tutors um, do their research on. Do they do research on topics that really interest you? It's very important. What accommodation is offered by the college? Do they offer it all three years or do they only offer it in the first and the third year? Um, what is the library and computer pro provision? Can you defer? Um, and also another important consideration would be, you know, how many biology, how many students do biology there? Because while some colleges only offer places to a small number of biology students, other colleges offer more. Um, and you have to really think, you know, would you feel comfortable living and learning in the spaces provided by the particular colleges? Important to note, though, around 20% of applications are open, so they are not allocated to a specific college and will be chosen by colleges. Um, later on in August when the A-level results or rather examination results are made available. So um, what's involved in terms of applying? Uh, we have to obviously think about the UCAS forms um, and in terms of what we take a careful look at, GCSE results or equivalent to GCSE results are very important. Certainly A's and A-star grades are definitely required but there is no magic number that guarantees success, in other words that guarantees you'll be shortlisted. In terms of A-levels, what do we look for? We look for A-level bi biology is required and a second A-level in chemistry, physics, mathematics, further mathematics is also required. In terms of the IB, a total score of at least 39 points, including core points with seven at the higher level of mathematics or a science, preferably biology is required. Now, obviously, I appreciate there are lots of other sorts of qualifications um, and you can find lots of details on the university pages on international qualifications about what we accept. Critical thing is that you must be predicted or have already achieved um, um, either A star AA with the A star in biology, chemistry, physics or maths or equivalent. The personal statements are very important to us and we take a great deal of notice of them. So do take time to compose these. Um, please tell us about why you want to study biology, particularly what makes you passionate about biology. You know? 
and then also talk about how you've built on this interest sort of outside your formal learning within schools. You could mention things you have read that have really inspired you, recent achievements and ambitions, relevant work experience or summer schools, volunteering and relevant extracurricular activities. And by relevant, I mean extracurricular activities that indicate your passion for biology um, or science. And we want to emphasize that potential is at least as important as achievement. We're looking for people who will really flourish when they come to Oxford. What about the shortlisting process? Will you get an interview if you apply? Well, as you might imagine, we receive many more applicants than there are numbers of places, and therefore we have to shortlist. Now we interview those showing the greatest potential as biologists in their UCAS form. Now it's important to know that we take into account the full range of, of information that is made available to us, including important information about school performance and any specific, specific factors that may have affected your achievement. Now all shortlisted candidates will get interviewed by two colleges. In terms of the admissions process um, in the coming academic year, 2020 to 2021, it is very likely that these interviews will be conducted remotely. In terms of the interviews, um, we really do try our best to make you feel at ease and for it to be more of a discussion and a two-way interaction. Um, we are not testing your memory or your ability to recall lots of facts about biology. Um, and in fact, the main things we are interested are, in are um, a real enthusiasm for biology, a genuine interest. Um, critical thinking is very important. We look for the application of what core knowledge you may have when working towards answers to new problems. We look at how you respond to hints, help and encouragement. And we're also looking for evidence that you have read wi widely and beyond the basic biology curriculum. And we you need to um, have, or, or we will offer places to people that also show great commitment and willingness to work hard. There's a great deal of work involved in this biology degree course, and we need to know that you um, will have the capacity to deal with this. So what sort of thing will we ask you? Um, we ask a diversity of questions. We really, really want to get the best out of you. And you have opportunities, as I say, at two colleges to shine. We will provide you with perhaps data or um, objects from nature. Um, and we will ask you to observe and describe the things that you see. We might ask you about uh, the relationships between you know, the structures that you see and the functions and adaptations that they may reflect. If we show you data, we might show you graphs in different formats and we might ask you to describe what the graphs show. This would then perhaps lead to a question about hypothesis that might um, explain the patterns you see. We will also, um, in the interview, ask some sort of general questions um, and ask some important questions. For example, does climate change matter? Um, how do we know the climate is changing? Are rainforests important? That, that sort of thing. So sort of more general biology knowledge current affair, around current affairs and key issues that affect us all currently. Um, we will invite you to, to, to talk about those issues as well. So in terms of offers, um, on average, we make an offer to around one in four applicants. The offers are usually based on uh, either having achieved or being predicted three A levels or equivalent A star AA with at least an A in biology and an A star in a science or maths. Um, or we last for at least 39 points in IB, excluding bonus points with a 776 in the higher level subjects or 7 in biology or in other science and maths. We also want to clarify that we do have these open offers, as I've mentioned. So every tutor or interviewer will see between 20 and 30 people. And we have a pool of 20 or so students that are guaranteed a place to read biology if they meet the standard offer. Um, but their college is not known until afterwards um, and we will um, be able to allocate this, the students that are in the pool that have received that offer to, um, to their college when A-level results come out or equivalent um, examination results come out in August. And the reason we have the pool is to make sure that all deserving candidates get a place and this of course guards against colleges falling short of their quota if grades are not achieved. So why study biology in Oxford? 
Well, it's a very diverse, forward-looking course taught by dynamic, very active researchers and teachers who absolutely love what they do, many of them world leaders in their fields. The teaching is directly linked to that research. We have um, a wealth of local resources for teaching and research, many opportunities over the three to four years for lab and fieldwork, both in the UK and overseas. There is some departmental and college financial assistance to enable you to do that fieldwork. And all students have a college, which is their home for the, the, their time in Oxford. And this college provides, um, as well as accommodation for at least two of the years, it also provides a great deal of pastoral support, social and some financial support. And we also have a tutorial system that pr produces graduates that are able to think critically, to communicate clearly, to collaborate and to innovate. In other words, to offer you an education that will prepare you for the challenges of the 21st century, whichever path you take when you leave. Thank you. Now that is the end of my talk, but I do urge you to watch um, a video that we put together on the um, perspectives of students about uh, their experiences as biologists at Oxford. Thank you very much.